Okay, so if you clicked on this video, you're probably struggling with loading things in the background in Godot. Uh, I was there once upon a time, and I'm going to show you my solution. Hopefully it saves you some time. And, and again, this is not like the definitive way. This is just how I did it. Okay, so let's say you have this function here, create terrain with drunken walk. And if I press play, you'll see what it does. First off, it hangs for a bit, and then it creates all this terrain using the drunken walk algorithm, like nuclear throne or something. And it works, it's pretty cool, but notice when I press play, it hangs, right? And that sucks. So is there a way that you can have it not hang? So yes, let me show you. So instantly it starts, the little guy is, is buzzing around, and then once the train is ready, it pops in in the background. So, how does that work? Well, I wrote a class called Worker, and it's a background thread, and you post jobs at it, and then it'll offload all your work onto a background thread, but not all of it, and I'll show you what parts And now. But uh, yeah, so let, let, let's just see, okay, what that looks like. Um, instead of this stupid function here, where we inline instance and add, you're gonna to have to break it up a little bit so that you only load, then you build up all the things that you want to instance into um, this array here, return it, and then the worker will then start giving you back all the things you wanted to load and then ask you to instance them one by one. And that gives us uh, that gives us background loading. That's that's the interface, so it's pretty easy to use. Um, that's it. You could download uh, the project now and, and use this as a template, um, and it should work for you. So you might be wondering, though, uh, if you're curious, why do we have to break it up into two? Um, is there something really efficient or smart about that? It's like, no, it, it's actually just working around two very big bugs in Godot that don't seem to be getting fixed anytime soon. Um, first bug would be that you might say, well, why not just instance here? Well, because if you instance here, there's a bug in Godot where if this node happens to have a signal and all your nodes are gonna have signals because it's Godot, um, when you eventually free that node, there's a small chance that it'll crash your game. A very, very small chance the bug is very hard to reproduce, but it does happen, and so you can't have that. And then the other thing, we're adding the child to the scene tree um, out of the background thread, because this, this little thing here works on the main thread. The comment here says this runs in the main thread, but it runs in tiny time slices. And how it's doing that is that um, the job is just iterating over your big list of things to load, and depending on the batch size, will yield and you know give control back to the game uh, to do its stuff. So yeah, um, there's another bug where if you have a collision uh, shape 2D, uh, sometimes when you add that off main thread, it causes a crash. Again, a really hard to reproduce bug, but it does happen, so you can't have it. And so the solution to that is that you must always instance and add to the scene tree on the main thread. Um, but we can just do that in tiny time slices over time. And it all works. Um, yeah, so that's more or less the best we can do, I think. So in terms of what we can offload onto a separate thread, we can offload our algorithm of like randomly walking around and that's stupid and slow. Loading things from the disk, we can offload onto a background thread but then when it comes to instancing and adding to the scene tree, we got to figure out some sort of smart way to actually do that in the main thread. So one thing I've seen other people do is that rather than do what I did here where we build up an array and then we iterate over it, uh, yielding, and you ask, you know, who's calling this? It's, it's, it's the worker. And the, the, the worker is just a big mess of, you know, mutexes and semaphores that... Uh, very nicely run all our jobs for us. So don't worry about that unless you you know, are curious. But um, why do we do it like this rather than just 
using a, a call to ferret and pushing it all into the, the main thread that way? Well, because if you think about it, here I have like a loop of 10,000 by five by two, right? So that's a big old number. Um, and you don't want to be sending all those messages at the, um, the main thread message queue. And if I show you like a game that I use uh, this code in, um, yeah, so this is proc gen. So this is all generated and you see there was no loading. And when I go to the next room, again, there was no loading there. It was all just done in the background. But this game gets a bit crazy, right? You know, there's AI and bullets and all this stuff. And I want to be able to sort of schedule what's more important, the game going on, the game logic, the game physics, the game graphics, or loading in the background. So in this game, when I'm doing nothing, I actually increase the rate that the background thread is allowed to do stuff at um, by controlling the batch the batch size. Um, and that's really, really useful. Um, and, and that's why I would say do it uh, the way I did it, rather than just sending out a bunch of um, call to ferrets, because you can't control that, and it's just going to end up being jank if you send, like, whatever, 20,000 messages in the queue of the main thread. So, yeah, that's, um, that's the project. You can download it. The GitHub link is in the details of the, the video. Uh, yeah, so I hope this is useful for people. Um, thanks for watching.